Welcome to SOS Media, your number one source of the latest news, opinions, and in-depth investigations that dig deeper into today's developing stories around the globe. It is now common knowledge that parents who strive to link their children to celebrities often do so with a significant interest in financial gain. While other motivations may play a role, the interest for potential wealth and lucrative opportunities is a driving force for many of these usually needy parents. These parents see associations with celebrities as pathways to endorsement deals, sponsorships and other lucrative ventures that could substantially benefit their families financially. The prospect of securing such opportunities motivates parents to actively seek out connections with celebrities, whether through networking or public appearances or strategic alliances. They understand the power of celebrity influence in today's culture and are eager to capitalize on it for financial gain. It remains a true point to say that the promise of financial rewards may overshadow other considerations for some parents, who may prioritize monetary success over their children's well-being or autonomy and potentially pushing them into situations that may not align with their interests or values. In this pursuit of financial gain, it's essential for parents to maintain a balance and consider the long-term implications for their children. While financial stability is undoubtedly important especially in today's world, it should for sure not come in at the expense of our children's happiness, integrity or personal development. Finding this balance is crucial for ensuring that the pursuit of money does not overshadow the well-being of the family as a whole. In June 2022, R. Kelly was sentenced to 30 years in prison after being found guilty on nine counts of a superseding indictment, charging him with alleged racketeering predicated on criminal conduct including exploitation of children, forced labor and man act violations. These allegedly involved the coercion and transportation of women and girls in interstate commerce to engage in illegal activity, according to the U.S. Attorney's Office Eastern District of New York. After being found guilty of three counts of CP and three counts of enticing a minor in Chicago, R. Kelly was sentenced in February 2023 to 20 years in prison with one year running consecutively to his 30-year sentence in New York. He however subsequently appealed both his New York and Chicago cases and the appeal proceedings are ongoing. R. Kelly has given his opinion on his feeling cheated and sidelined by the U.S. federal government, explaining the fact that the parents of his alleged victims misled him. He clarifies that he was mostly misled about the ages of their daughters while he also revealed how the courts withheld vital information and evidence that could otherwise have cleared his name. During a recent prison phone call with WAC 100 that streamed on Clubhouse, R. Kelly talked about how this valued evidence was purposefully buried by the authorities and also compared and equated his current legal plight to that of a man, exonerated by the Equal Justice Initiative with the help of civil rights lawyer Brian Stevenson, all but in the movie named Just Mercy. R. Kelly went on to explain how his legal team provided text chats indicating parental consent for minors who were residing with him. He asserted that these messages could either validate his actions or reveal parental deception about the girl's ages, and thus supporting his defense that he was unaware he was engaging in a statutory illegality. We for sure know that there was a general concern about the general behavior of the parents of these alleged victims and why they avoided the legal proceedings. While it's possible that individuals might conspire to fabricate allegations of abuse for financial gain, such situations are extremely difficult to successfully orchestrate without the public knowing. However, if a parent were to skip court appearances due to such a conspiracy, it could potentially be part of a broader scheme to manipulate legal proceedings for monetary purposes. In such a scenario, the motivation for skipping court would be driven by the desire to avoid scrutiny or exposure of the fraudulent nature of the allegations. However, it's important to understand the fact that making false accusations of abuse is a serious offense with possible legal repercussions, and conspiring to exploit legal processes for financial gain is also highly unethical and illegal. In my personal view, I believe that if there are genuine concerns about the legitimacy of the abuse allegations or suspicions of foul play, it's crucial to listen to them carefully and give attention to them to ensure that the truth is uncovered. Skipping court appearances under false pretenses not only undermines the integrity of the legal system but also can have detrimental consequences for the parents and child, but most especially the child who claims to be a victim of abuse. When I first met Robert, my parents told me to lie about my age and so when I met him, he thought that I was 18, 
one of the alleged victims Azriel Clary told King during an interview. On top of that, when I was 17 my parents were actually making me, trying to get me to take photos with him and take close videos with him and all kinds of stuff to be used for blackmail, she endeavored to explain. It is also true that court documents showed that one of the parents of an alleged victim was struggling financially, and had filed for bankruptcy at least three times since 2007. The parents filed for bankruptcy in August 2007 months before Kelly's 2008 trial began. They listed $405,381 in assets but $449,219 in liabilities. The couple's monthly income was $8,200 with monthly expenses totaling $8,400. Court documents further reveal R. Kelly had spent over $800,000 on them. Later in life when aged 37, the alleged victim filed for Chapter 7 bankruptcy after R. Kelly was sent to prison. Just Mercy depicts Walter McMillan's wrongful conviction for the murder of Rhonda Morrison, leading to six years on Alabama's death row. Courts overlooked black alibi witnesses' testimony placing McMillan, a role played by Michael Jordan elsewhere during the crime. The film quoted by R. Kelly and the real-life case it was based on showed that the judge's jury selection showed racial bias. It also showed that there was evidence crucial to the defense that was suppressed, thus denying McMillan due process. But we also can't run away from the fact that movies often draw inspiration from real-life events and experiences to create compelling narratives. While some directly depict specific real-life events or individuals, others are inspired by broader societal issues or historical contexts. Movies have the power to explore complex themes, raise awareness about social issues and provide insight into different cultures and perspectives. If any jury would hear what I've spoken on, what my lawyer has spoken on and what you have seen with the records and the evidence being stolen and allegedly shown to witnesses, if the jury had known that, what do you think the jury would have said? R. Kelly asked during the interview. As we continue to witness new developments occurring towards R. Kelly's appeal proceedings, we can just stay optimistic that this time around, the relevant truth will be put into consideration. This is the ray of hope that makes us keep our breath at hold. We believe R. Kelly and his legal team will be able to outline all the injustices, misinterpretations of the law, cases of lying and witness tampering that have marred all R. Kelly's legal proceedings and that the law, truth and justice will this time along prevail. It has been a long wait and we can't wait any longer to see R. Kelly regain his deserved freedom. Thank you for watching today's video brought to you by SOS Media. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please subscribe and hit the bell icon so you never miss any of our videos. Also remember to leave your comment about today's topic in the comment section below.